Fashion is like a fruit. You couldn't eat it the day before and you couldn't eat it the day after. It's just about today. I'm Albert. It's very, very cut and short, you know? I'm not Albert from Lanvin, I'm not Albert from Saint Laurent, I'm not Albert from Guy Roche. I'm just Albert. I always was. I think this is what helped me actually to stay, stay sane and, 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 and grounded. Um, to always be myself, to be who I am, to be what I am. Um, but I make clothes for a living. Some people say that um, I'm a good technician. Maybe, I would love to. Some people say that um, I'm a storyteller. Well, when we do clothes, when we do a collection, it's a story as well that we are telling. Some would say creative director. This is actually the title I like the least. A creative director. I think that when you create, you cannot direct. And when you direct, it's very, very difficult to be creative. So I don't think that direction and creation are good sisters. I work with people. I love people. This is what excites me today more than anything. So that's the inspiration. I have to um, have two elements today in my life in order to be doing what I need to do. One is um, freedom. And the other one is a little bit of love. If I have these two ingredients, I think I can do what I do and be happy. If I have to uh, choose between being a producer or product, I think I'm a producer, so I can be backstage. I'm more about this foyer, this antenna, I look. I look all the time. I look at people, I listen, I, I, I try to understand what is it that women want, what is it that men are all about. I try to understand this uh, data, I try to process it, and I try to analyze it. But sometimes I have to also forget everything and just work with my feelings. So this is what I do, working with feeling and telling story. Luxury today is, is, is in a different place, I think. Somehow, we always have this definition between high fashion and street fashion. When it comes to street fashion, it was really all about marketing. I mean, you analyze the product, the time, I mean, the price, the production, the color, everything was all very calculated. When we talk about luxury, about high fashion, it was never about calculating. It was about intuition. I think today when I see that we in luxury are producing in a way, sweatshirt and, and some street fashion company are doing evening wear, um, I'm questioning like the system. I'm questioning whether the involvement of marketing into the world of luxury is the best thing or the worst thing that could happen to luxury. I think what we have to do is to still elevate people. I mean, we still have to to make them dream. Because it's not just about the two meter of fabrics, you know, that we create a dress. It's more than that, more than that. It's what that piece of fabric made you feel. How do you feel? How do you stand? Who you are when you wear it? I think that what, what we do is almost a work that we could do almost in a laboratory, you know, because we are trying, we are working on shapes, on cuts, on fabrics, on technique. And sometimes it takes us like six, seven, eight samples to create one piece. And it's okay. Now, if you think about it, it's not very profitable um, in, in, the, in, in the sense of business or marketing. We also produce in Paris, you know, with French Atelier, which has such a know-how, but so much more expensive that if we will produce it elsewhere in the world. So now what do you do? Do you shut all these places and run away? I mean, and what happened to these people? And you know, we are an industry of people, you know, in the end of the day, our industry of fashion is an industry that is based on a thread and a needle and a seamstress. So it is a people industry. So we cannot leave them. And we are working with people. This is our orchestra, you know, we're only like kind of conductors that without our orchestra, we couldn't do anything. So our team is helping us to produce our ideas, to make it happen, to bring it to life. Without them, we're nothing. And that's why we work with them. This is why we have this symbiosis between the design and the technique. I do find that the one thing that I enjoy the most doing 
is being in the store, in the dressing room, and waiting for women to come with a piece. And sometimes I, I can't wait and I go inside the dressing room and I tell them that when I do that, I don't feel a des- like a designer, I feel more like a doctor. And I love to work and I love to feel that I could make a change. I love to see um, the, the person and, and I love to find the pieces that will fit her. And I, when I'm talking about fitting, I don't talk about just physically, what, what size are you? And then give you the right piece that it will fit you physically. But I think it's about knowing the person, is understanding who she is, to understanding what is it that she wants to hide, what is it that she loves about herself, where is she coming from and where she goes to. So for me, the real haute couture is when you actually work uh, with a person. All, all the, the philosophy of my work when I joined Lanvin, after two years I was out of, of fashion and, uh, and traveled the world, was to do things in a different way, to do things um, that I enjoy. I wanted to bring joy to my life. I didn't want to do fashion and to suffer and to complain. I wanted to enjoy what I do. And I think that when you enjoy something and when you bring a good energy to it, it shows in the product. I mean, I think that we create what we are. Basically, when we are sad, we create sad. And when we are happy, we create happy. And when we are miserable, we create miserable. And it shows and it feels, it feels on the body. I think that it's one thing when we do it in the show, it's another, when you go to a store, you don't want to see the same jackets and you don't want to see all your girlfriend eating or coming to the office with the same skirt. The whole thing was to do almost like one of a kind. So to do a one of a kind collection that I fit almost, I mean, I think that half of my life I'm in fittings and I will take a piece and I will drape it in in red and it's one thing. And then I said, let's do it in blue. And I think, wow, okay, the marketing people will be happy with me. So we do it in blue and then in blue it doesn't work. And then I have to change and one of a sudden I have to make it longer. And one of a sudden in blue, I have to add a few more pleats on the side. And then I have to move it from the waist, maybe a bit higher than the waist. And somehow in the red, it was good because the red, the color was enough. When I use a non-color, I have to bring a volume. So there we go. We have now two skirts that I thought were one. So I prefer evolution. I prefer when things move gradually. When you take, you know, a jacket and you add something and then you move forwards. And, and that's what I am also as a person. Um, what I think changed a lot, I mean, and more than a lot, is, is internet. You know, I think that that changed fashion. It's like the industrial revolution changed the world at the time. I think that the camera, when the camera came to fashion, it changed fashion enormously because before designer used just like a pencil and, and it was all about illustration. And illustration, you have to add in order to be, or to see some, some sort of substance. So you have to add more line, more detail, more, more colors, more, more volume. And then the camera started to, to, to be used in, in fashion and fashion changed. What, what is the difference between the three media, you know, between the eye, the mirror and the screen? And I find more and more that whatever looks amazing on the screen doesn't feel good on the body. So how do you deal with style.com? How do you deal with Vogue.com? Do we have to do a collection that looks good on the screen or that looks good on the body? Now, is it looks good on the body or feel good on the body? This is another question. Red carpet is a very, very, very difficult thing. I, I, I have to first know the person and I know the actresses, the one that we're dressing, I love them. They're beautiful, they're fragile, they are, they are talented, they are gorgeous women. And I try to just help them to look beautiful on the red carpet. For me, it would be like helping them more feeling beautiful and looking beautiful. And then if it photographs well, okay. But it's not always photographing well what I do because it's, it's more about how it feels and how they look. And I always try um, to, to see, this is um, always like a difficult one, how to make my dress disappear. You know, it's exactly like in architecture. When you come to your 
room, and even if you had a very, very good architect that had done it, you don't want to come to the room and to say, beautiful architecture. You want to come to a room and you want the architecture to disappear. So you almost feel that nothing was done. Because I think that when you do the red carpet and all you see is a dress with a bag, with a necklace and with a pair of earring and extension and eyelashes, you're missing the point. I want to see the women. I want to understand who they are. I, I, I respect them for the work they had done. I respect them for month and month and month of, of anxiety and hard work and fear not to have another job and fear not to be loved and fear not to be good. I, I appreciate, I respect them, I love them for that fragility and vulnerability. These are the women I, 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 I get. And now I have to make a piece that in the end the piece will disappear. And all I want to see is the face of that woman. The world is changing. You know, I was in China a few months ago and I saw this amazing generation of young, young kids in China. Most of them are, you know, they don't have brothers and sisters. So it's like one person that has like mother and father and two sets of grandparents that love them and, and, and nurture them and educate them. So you see a beautiful, beautiful product, beautiful kids that are so sure of themselves and they're so full of love, you know, that they were taken care of. At the same time, I saw that there is a great sense of tradition on one hand, and then there is also a very futuristic lifestyle. So everything is tweeting, everything is, you know, like Facebook, everything is like on, on machines. So people can sit and, and send each other a tweet or, or an email rather than look into their eyes and said, you know what, I really love you this morning. There isn't any of that. And I'm thinking there is something about the past and something about the future. And there is something that in the present seemed to be a bit confusing. And for me, everything is about the moment, is about the today. Even though I hate the word the moment, I mean, it's, I, I prefer longevity. I feel much less joy in the world today than before. I don't know, I, th I, I see this seriousness, this fear everywhere. Everybody is kind of scared for some reason. Everybody is like, oh my God, I have to run. Oh my God, I mean, it's so stressful. Oh my God, I have to perform. Oh my God, I have to sell. And, and somehow, I think that we have to go back to the essence of what we really, really did and do. And you know, fashion was always a family business. That was the nature of, uh, of fashion. And there was, a, there was a logic to it because, you know, when you're with your family, even if you don't have great legs, you can still wear a bikini. And it allows you to, to do things and to experiment. And those experiments, I think, were the drive of innovation. This is when fashion came. This is when fashion become, because you took a risk. And I want to take back that risk. And I'm not saying that we have to be silly uh, and to like take risks and say, let's try to do like a tool, I mean, for winter. No, because we know it's not working. But I think we have to bring a bit of intuition, a bit of um, instinct to fashion. I think we have to bring back joy. We have to go back to know-how. You know, we work around the world with atelier that are quite, old. I mean, the people in the atelier are not in their 20s and they are not in their 30s and they are not in their 40s. They are almost in their 60s. And what will happen next? Maybe in the past, it was all about fashion and fashion was more important than anything. Because if you look good, people sometimes have the perception, perception or like the thought that you are also smart. I mean, she looks so amazing. She should be like amazing also in her work. And you know what? I met so many people that were not looking amazing, but they were the best in their job because it wasn't about themselves. It was about giving. Somehow when I see people that are too perfect in the look, it's all about them. It's not about the rest. Some of my best assistants, I mean, were the ones that are coming just like with a white shirt and a jeans. And then everything they do is about fantasy for the rest to give. It's about giving, you know? I, I remember when my father died, my mother that was a painter um, had to go and work in a cafe as a cashier. And uh, she never did it in her life. You know, I was a teenager and uh, 
she told me it's so confusing for her because she she has to like get them things and then she has to get their money and give them change. So she asked someone from that we knew that was um, a bookkeeper. She asked her if she can explain her the essence of um, accounting. And that lady told her it's very easy. You get and you give. That's so easy. You give and you get. And I think that this is the essence of life. We have to give and we get. And when we get, we give. And it has to go both ways. You cannot only give and you cannot only get.